Hello, so this morning we're taking a look at the Spartan 7W Executive in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This plane was built in the 1930s uh, by a successful oil businessman called William Skelly. I think the business was then sold on to Getty in later years. But throughout the 1930s and 40s, they built these um, airplanes. So it was originally developed for him and his friends, basically. They wanted a, an executive airplane that was fast. So it kind of looks a little bit like a fighter, and I guess that's no accident. So you can see inside the simulator, the modeling is really, really good. It kind of falls down a little bit when you get close to the engine. It kind of not quite as high detail as we've come to expect with some of the other add-ons but then it's only 20 euros or 24 euros I think I paid including tax so you can see the the uh, material modeling is really nice though so if we go and get inside the airplane the inside is modeled really nicely as well there's some nice touches so some animations there's like the um, ashtrays work <laughs> it's of its era with smoking I guess and the doors work or the door I should say works so let's just go and click that to close it again. Uh, at the back of the cabin, there's some uh, comic books on the seat, which is quite cool. So <clears throat> let's go and get it started up and take it for a flight. So we've got a fuel shutoff valve on the floor. It's interesting on the checklist, it says to set it to center, but it's actually labeled rear in the airplane. You can see in various places, if we just reshow the... Um, the yoke which has now completely disappeared how do we get it back there we go so you can see on the yoke the polygon count is quite low in places i imagine the reason for that is to keep the frame rate good because if you look around the cockpit there's an awful lot of compound curves going on so there's um, a, a visor here can we oh yeah we have to click on it and hold down to get it to go up and down you go either side of it to move the visor but yeah you can see has a lot of compound curves going on which is really difficult to do in 3d so i imagine that's why you can see a low polygon count here and there okay so mixture to rich there's a fuel valve switch over here there's the magnetos we'll put them to both so then we've got a primer so we'll hold the primer on for a few seconds did we put that we haven't done master battery yet so now we've done the master battery we can hold the primer on for a few seconds on the lights i think strobes and nav are already on which is all a bit odd but there we go um we'll put the boost pump on clear prop then we've op opening the starter cover makes him shout clear prop and then you can press the button in and you hold your button on even though it doesn't hold the button down you have to hold the button in for a few seconds my one misgiving with this let's just turn the boost pump back off my one misgiving is this button doesn't animate at all if you haven't got everything else ready so it won't even try to turn the engine over so in my mind it should try and turn it over without firing if you try and start it without everything being configured but there you go Anyway, so let's go and calibrate the altimeter. So I just press B to do that. Let's go and turn the avionics on. So GPS has come up immediately, which is a bit odd. And just waiting for the autopilot to come online. We'll go and turn the transponder on. And we'll put the landing lights. Notice the landing lights have two positions. They're a rocker switch. So there's down and on. So if you go and look outside, You've actually got an assembly that rotates out of the wing for streamlining purposes. Okay. So, let's come off the parking brake and try and taxi it out, shall we? So, obviously, you can see visibility forwards on the ground is very poor. So, we're going to do this from outside. So, we're going to go over the grass and hope we can turn. We should really have done a pushback. Okay, so something I'm forgetting here is the propeller RPM obviously needs to be increased. And some back stick as well to keep the tail on the ground, to keep the tyres. So you'll notice straight away here I'm having trouble 
there seems to be a bit of a not really a fault I don't know if it's realistic or not but it's a job to get it to t start turning also there's a bug in version 1 of the aeroplane where the tailwheel turns in the wrong direction so it's animated to go the opposite direction than you're actually steering okay and you can see it's almost like there's a natural braking force going on on the wheels or as soon as you come off the throttle it rolls to a stop quite abruptly so it's actually quite difficult to handle on the ground for those reasons okay so we're going to just come out to the runway here we're at um, Swansea there's a big old runway here Just trying to swing round, <laughs> trying to do two things at once doesn't work well with a simulator, does it? Okay, so we're going to sit up, or actually sitting up doesn't really help us. So we're going to do this very get carefully and gently. So we're not going to use flaps for takeoff, but we are going to introduce power very, very carefully and let the plane accelerate of its own volition and be quite careful about then balancing out as the tail comes up can see it wanders around so without pedals it's actually remarkably difficult so we're in the air pretty quickly we're only 75% throttle so gear up uh, let's have a look at it from the outside now it's in the air so once it's in the air it's actually really easy to fly But getting it off the ground is very difficult and landing it is very difficult as well so it's kind of similar to the DC-3 in that respect but I just wonder about that ground handling it's it's very resistive to moving but maybe these big fat tires are the cause of that so that may be what they're trying to simulate so we're just going to do a touch and go and then we'll do some aerobatics just to, or not aerobatics, but some testing of the aeroplane in like stalling, things like that but yeah, my concern really is about the flight model it seems a bit like it's on rails although saying that, it does have adverse yaw going on you can see that happening there if we throw in some maximum rudder deflection it does seem to affect it nicely so again this is all just my impressions not based on any real world experience of anything like this just when I first loaded the airplane I was quite critical of it because it wasn't behaving as I would have expected but I think that was more down to me than the airplane so it's a bit like the DC-3 in flight simulator that it's quite a handful and you have to fly it with respect you can't just chuck it around okay so we're going to slow down you can see it's quite fast even at 50% throttle there it was running along at 140 knots without too much trouble so we're coming off the speed we're going to turn back in Interestingly, look, without any rudder, it holds a straight line, although it's going quite fast, I guess. Holds a straight line around a corner without too much trouble. Okay, so let's get the gear down. Should we go and watch the animations for that? Some big old tyres, aren't they? So there's the airfield. So we'll configure the flaps. So you will notice as well there is a second flap lever here so even though the flap levers haven't actually done anything here so there seems to be a disconnect going on there with the flap position and what's going on there are belly flaps which is across here so let's just turn back in bring it in for a touch and go so 
So we're trying to get the speed underneath 100 knots according to the checklist. You shouldn't even attempt to come in. So obviously we've got a stall speed with full flaps on the indicated airspeed of about 65 knots. So we need to stay above that. So we're just going to come rolling in. So propeller RPM is on maximum. So engine's on idle, almost. We're just increasing the throttle a little bit to control descent rate. So it is quite docile, but I'm flying it very carefully within its kind of... Yeah, we're, we're descending too fast, so I'm going to sit up so we can see the trees. I've increased throttle to 50%. Obviously with a lot of drag it loses speed and it starts to lose height as you get slow, so just being careful really. So then pull the throttle back again and we should start dropping to the markers. There we go, look we're dropping again. So flare it gently and more of a bounce and go than a touch and go, so we'll increase throttle again. Back in the air. Gear can come up. Notice we've only got the belly flap down. It's quite interesting, isn't it? And I can't seem to get the belly flap to come back up. There we go. So let's go and do some tests. with running it around the sky, do some stalls. So let's go full throttle and see what happens with the engine gauges. Can we overstress the manifold pressure? It doesn't look like we can. So exhaust gas temperature, we got fuel, cylinder temperature, so it looks like you can't really overstress it running at full throttle. Oil temperature could get high, I guess, over time. I'm not sure if it's simulated or not. Okay, just keep an eye on where the airfield is in relation to us. It's behind us at the moment, so we'll turn back around this way. So the first thing we're going to do is a stall. Just a straightforward straight stall. So. level out. I'm pulling the uh, camera out to fisheye so I can see the horizon. So it throttles back to idle. Is this stall sound? And it's dropping a left wing but it was quite gentle. But we've tumbled. Whoa. And that's unrecoverable. So, we're going to use slew to get us out of it. So this is why I do these things, to find out. So it dropped a wing and then went into an unrecoverable tumble. There was no way out of that. So I'm not going to do any more stall testing. Because <laughs> I don't fancy going out to a farmer's field with a bulldozer to go and pick the bits up. So there's the airfield behind us. It looks very pretty, doesn't it? But it is difficult to fly. And it's diff very, very difficult to handle on the ground. So there's a the runway. Losing the speed, flaps, gear. This is the shorter runway, but we shouldn't have any problems. He says, look how fast I am. So you do need to be careful. Yeah, I'm going to go around for the, the longer runway. Because if nothing else, it would give me an opportunity to lose some speed. 
keeping an eye on this indicated airspeed as we come round on kind of a Spitfire approach. So let's get that belly flap down as well. on the airspeed bit of a bounce putting in quite a lot of rudder to hold it straight and feeding in back stick as the tail falls. This tail hasn't come down to the ground yet. Now it has. So I'm going to go back to outside to have half a hope of steering this thing. And I'm going to ground loop it if I'm not careful. So as I said, it's an absolute handful. And it's got that curious thing, look, the resistance on the tyres on tarmac has rolled us to a stop almost immediately. So we're going to double back. See, this seems a bit odd. The ground handling needs a bit of work, I think. There doesn't seem to be much sway, although it's very wide undercarriage. Yeah, we're across the grass now. There's, um, it's very wide undercarriage, so maybe it doesn't sway much, but it seems a bit odd when you've got momentum on the ground, we're going way too fast, They're trying to slow us down. It seems to be finding this sweet spot of, pa of thrust or power and resistance on the tyres is really tough. Okay, so wheel brakes on. Propeller can come back. Mixture can come out, which will shut off the engine. The magnetos can come off. The fuel valve can come off. The various lights we turned on can come back off. And then it's just avionics. We didn't turn the alternator on. We were running on battery the whole time. Good job it was a short flight, hey? Um, and there we go. Oh, the um, fuel shutoff valve will be the last thing, won't it? It goes the other way around to off. And then obviously we can get out of the aeroplane and notice there's no clipping. You can walk through the walls with the internal views, which is quite nice sometimes. So there you go. That's the... Uh, what's it called again? The Spartan 7W Executive in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So when I first looked at it this morning, I was quite damning about it. But the longer I've spent with it, I think you just have to be really, really careful. I do think the ground handling needs some um, uh, needs addressing. And um, the tail wheel obviously is bugged that they've reversed the animation on the, you know, the relative to the axis. And there doesn't seem to be any spring loading in it either. But that may be accurate to the real thing. But in terms of modelling, the plane looks great. It is a handful to fly, so don't expect to just be able to jump into it and fly around in it. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. If you like this sort of aeroplane, you'll enjoy it. Let's go and have a look from the outside view. So yeah, if you like this sort of aeroplane, you'll enjoy it a lot. And it's not too expensive. I bought it for €24 Euros from Sim Market. Okay, I'll see you again soon.